In this video, we're going to look at how to set up NDI streams into Vertex and from Vertex. Vertex can handle NDI streams from multiple sources, even with alpha channel. So first things first, how do we get an NDI stream into Vertex? If you go onto systems, in the systems tab, you can find all your connected systems in your session. Currently, I have one system. If I open it up, I can see all my and uh, all my input sources, including NDI sources. I can now switch to my second computer where I will go ahead and start up an NDI scan converter, which I will now use to not capture my webcam, but to capture, uh, let's go for a region of interest or let's do full screen. Now yeah, we'll do full screen. So I should now be capturing a NDI source from my second computer using the scan converter. When I switch back into Vertex, I can now go to my system number one, say rescan video inputs, and this will now scan for any inputs which have changed. This can either be if you're using an input card, if you have a different frame rate on your input card, a different resolution, or if it's an NDI stream, it will detect the NDI stream from the computer, give it an ID. And you can also see now the stream and the computer name um, where it's coming from. To add this to your project, to use it as a life input, simply do a right click and say add to project. Now in your content folder, you have the NDI input as a content asset, which you can use in your composition. I'm gonna drag and drop it onto my timeline. There we go, jump into it. And now it's gonna load the NDI stream coming from my notebook, probably gonna take a few seconds. And there we go. That's the stream from my notebook. If I now leave this container, the stream will also be, will be cut. So if I go back, it's gonna to have to reacquire the stream. This can be useful if you want to save network bandwidth, but in some cases this can really be a pain because you want to have the stream always present. So for that, what you can do, you can click on the clip container, up here in the inspector, switch to settings, and there switch this clip container to preloaded. What this does, it always keeps the stream active and always keeps the frames ready. So when you jump out and back into the clip container, it's automatically there. Next, we will check out how to send a NDI stream from Vertex to any NDI receiver. The way Vertex handles NDI streams out is based on our display surface concept. To get more information on that, check out our tutorials regarding the display surface. So what we have here in our project is one display surface from my computer. I can click on this display surface and I see it has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's okay, that's what I'll use for my NDI stream. This resolution is really gonna be the base of my NDI stream. I can also change it to something smaller, something larger if I need it. This is what the stream is gonna be based on. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some content that we have something we can actually stream. I'll grab a, well, let's go for a, a simple test pattern. There we go. Drop it on the timeline. That's my test pattern. That's what I want to stream off from NDI. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to go to my display surface, my display surface number one. I'm going to do a right click and say, create an NDI output stream. As soon as I click that, a new output stream is created with a name and it's assigned to a display surface. You can also assign multiple streams from multiple display surfaces. You can do some color space conversion or you can also limit the frame rate. For example, if you're setting a preview over NDI and you don't want to use the full frame rate of your vertex composition, you can also limit that to half the frame rate to save some bandwidth. The last thing we have to do before we have this stream appearing, we have to go onto our system and we need to have some place where pixels are rendered. So we can either switch the system into the full screen mode, which is yeah, useful if you're also displaying, for example, the content on, a, on an LED wall and just want to send it over NDI as well. Or if you don't want to have a full screen renderer, you only want to send NDI, you can set your system to streaming mode and this will open up a full screen render in the background and hide it again for you. So now we have the NDI stream being rendered in the background. And if we now switch to our computer over here, we can now go into our NDI studio monitor and check out if we have an NDI stream which is reaching us. So this is gonna take a, little, a while. 
and then as soon as it's loaded the NDI stream, we should be receiving it over here. There we go, iRversal, Vertex, and that's our test pattern being streamed. Now, this composition is rendered on black, but we may want to have this stream while keeping an alpha channel, for example, to send it into a broadcast mixer or to send a lower third or a title overlay. To do that, we have to go back into our Vertex project, go to our display surface, go to the video tab, and here you can see a background color. This background color per default is set to black, but I can now move this slider down to alpha and make it completely transparent. And if I switch back to my studio monitor, I can now jump into the studio monitor, go to settings, go to video and say show checkerboard. And now you can see that this is a completely transparent stream coming from Vertex. I can switch back here. I'll pop in the studio monitor down here. And if I, for example, now change my background, you could see it will go back red. Now it goes back transparent. So that's how you can really send out multiple NDI streams from Vertex with complete transparency.